Good morning, folks. Welcome to Family Net and Your Health. Well, it is the first day of spring and the sun is slowly returning. Thank goodness for that. And you know, it's a good thing because we need sunshine and we need the vitamin D it creates in our body. Let's go to the news and you'll see what I'm talking about. Vitamin D may ward off prostate cancer. Getting a little sunshine may be one way to, for men to cut their risk of prostate cancer, suggests a Harvard Medical School study of nearly 15,000 men. Researchers found men who have higher levels of vitamin D in their blood have roughly half the risk of developing aggressive tumors of the prostate than those with lower levels of vitamin D. Doctors are not ready to recommend the sunshine vitamin without more study, but many see little harm in getting the 15 minutes of sunshine a day that the body needs to make healthy levels of vitamin D. Folks, remember when your mom used to tell you, you kids go outside and play? Well, she wasn't just trying to get her you out of her hair. She was giving you instinctively good, healthy advice. Now, the current recommendation is we get about 400 units of vitamin D a day. And many health authorities feel that level's too low. Be sure your multiple vitamin has 400 international units of vitamin D. Plus, get that 15 to 30 minutes of sunshine daily. Here's a report on an issue that you may not be aware of. Pay attention to this one. Americans confused about genetically modified foods. According to a Rutgers Cook College national study of 1,200 Americans, only 48% are aware that genetically modified foods are currently for sale in supermarkets. Estimates suggest as much as 80% of processed foods contain at least one component from a genetically modified crop. And 79% of consumers are not aware they eat genetically modified foods on a regular basis. The report went on to say that 7 of 10 Americans don't even believe it's possible to transfer genes from an animal to a plant. Well, folks, that's what genetic engineering is, and you're eating it on a daily basis. Proponents of genetic engineering modify. It improves crop yield and promotes crops disease resistance. Opponents argue genetically modified foods increase food allergies and opens the door for potential genetic disasters. In any case, whatever the truth is, we're eating these foods and we don't even know it. Until they sort it all out, folks, I recommend you eat more organic foods, non-genetically modified, NGMO. They're time-tested. They're safe. Let's go to our next one. Tomato juice may cut clotting in diabetics. Tomato juice may help stave off heart troubles in people with type 2 diabetes, reveals a New York University School of Medicine small study of 14 adults with type 2 diabetes. Researchers have found drinking about 8 ounces of tomato juice daily for three weeks had a blood clot inhibitor effect on people with type 2 diabetes. Researchers are not clear as to why tomato juice had the beneficial effect. The report went on to state that tomato juice, the researchers think, inhibits blood platelets, thereby preventing the clots. Tomato juice has just a small amount of natural sugar, so most diabetics can enjoy tomato juice's benefits. Add to the tomato juice some omega-3s, you know, some fish oils, and I think you have a pretty good plan to help prevent those blood clots. Here's a report on an important issue. Carbohydrate type, not amount, linked to obesity. When it comes to carbohydrates, it's not how much you eat, but what kind you eat. That makes all the difference, shows a University of Massachusetts Medical School study of 573 people. Researchers found people who are overweight do not eat more carbohydrates than thin people. However, overweight people eat more refined carbohydrates, such as white bread, pasta, and refined cereals with added sugar, which cause a rapid spike in blood sugar. The report went on to say that refined carbohydrates and added simple sugars have what's called a high glycemic index. In other words, these foods, refined pasta, white breads, refined breakfast cereals, things with added sugar, raise the blood sugar rapidly, causing an over-release of insulin. The insulin then drives the sugar into fat stores, leading to obesity, because you're not burning it off with exercise. On the other hand, Whole grains digest slowly, thereby avoiding the spiking blood sugar. Now, this study is truly insightful. It pretty well tells the story on the carbohydrate issue. Today on Your Health, we're going to talk about good carbs and bad carbs. Not all of them are bad, folks. And in our last study that we just discussed, it gives you a clue as to what's good and what's bad. But first, Cindy joins us in the kitchen. She's got a great recipe for whole grain pasta, that whole grain. Now, that's the important part, with broccoli, with healthy cooking with Cindy. Then we're going to talk about carbs. Join us today on Your Health. 